The other week, I ranked all of the Gryffindor characters from the least brave to the most brave. And that started a series I'm doing where I'm going to sort every single character from every single Hogwarts house. This week, we're going to rank the Ravenclaws based on their defining trait, intelligence. I put together a list of 35 Ravenclaw characters, and I'm going to rank them in the following tiers. The most intelligent, intelligent, average, not intelligent, and dumb. I added some characters that go pretty deep into Harry Potter lore that the average fan probably would not know. So you're not only getting a ranking video, but you're also getting a Harry Potter lore video. If you enjoy this video, hit that like button. It will greatly help the channel with the algorithm. And if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. And you can also follow me on all of my socials, all of which are linked down below. Before we get into it, here's a fun fact about Ravenclaw. In order to enter their common room, the eagle door knocker asks you a riddle, and if you don't answer it correctly, you are denied entrance, making it the hardest common room to get into out of the four houses. While we can't really go to Hogwarts, you can make sure that your devices have the best fortification like the Ravenclaw common room by using NordVPN. NordVPN is the best way to protect your data online, giving you a virtual private network. It's able to block malware, stop intrusive tracking by concealing your IP, it helps you avoid malicious ads, and can even protect your browsing when you're not connected to a VPN server. But NordVPN can do so much more than just protect you. It has a lot of other benefits as well, one of my favorites being the ability to unlock movies and shows that aren't available on streaming services in your own country. I simply change my location and voila, I have access to things I didn't in the US. I was just re-watching, very fittingly, the Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts films, all of which I can access when I tap into Australia on NordVPN, and they even have the extended cut for the original eight Harry Potter films, which are really hard to find. And speaking of streaming services, I know that a lot of people, including myself, are very frustrated with Netflix's ban on sharing the password. Well, guess what? NordVPN has a way around this. By using NordVPN's MeshNet feature, it allows you to have 60 people all under one IP address, thus wiping away the ban. All of this and more can be enjoyed on up to 6 devices per account, and it's a risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee. And even better, if you use my link which I put down below, nordvpn.com slash movieflame, you get this exclusive deal plus a 2-year plan with a bonus 4 months free. This is an amazing deal for a fantastic product. Go check it out, you will not regret it. Now that I've said that, let's get the video started. Xenophilius Lovegood I would say that Xenophilius is in the not intelligent tier. He believes in way too many outrageous theories, stories, and creatures for me to put him in the average tier. However, he's not in the dumb tier because he was smart enough to run a very successful magazine, The Quibbler, and he did have a vast knowledge on a lot of different things. Unfortunately, a lot of those are made up though. Helena Ravenclaw I'd say Helena is average, and while this might be an okay place to rank for some people, this is a hard hit for Helena given the fact that her mother is one of the smartest witches to ever live. There is a reason why Helena was so desperate to steal her mother's diadem that was meant to make the wearer more intelligent. It's because she was just average herself and couldn't live up to her mother's brilliance. Ignatia Wildsmith Wildsmith is going to be the first character to make it in the top tier the most intelligent, and she's one of those characters from deep Harry Potter lore that I said I would go over. The reason why she's in the top tier is because she created flu powder, the act of traveling from one chimney to another in the wizarding world. Do you know how freaking hard that would have been? It takes a genius to be able to create something like that. She definitely deserves to be in the most intelligent tier. Gilderoy Lockhart Lockhart is going in the dumb tier. He literally could not produce any magic besides memory charms. He was absolutely useless. And sure, he was able to fool the whole wizarding world making them think he was this hero. But when you really think about it, that's not really the case. As soon as people met him in person or had a conversation with him, they knew he was a fraud from the moment he opened his mouth. Dumbledore, Harry, Ron, Hagrid, McGonagall, and so many others came to this conclusion right away. The only people that believed him were those that had never met him in person, but once you did meet him, he's just straight up dumb. And to make it even worse, he isn't even smart enough to realize that those around him see right through him, which says a lot because the people that know he's a fraud don't try to hide that they know this. Now this next part of the video is where I go over Hogwarts Legacy characters, which has some slight spoilers. Nothing major, but enough to make me think that I have to put in a spoiler warning. So if you don't want to know about that, skip to whatever time is on the screen. Neve Fitzgerald 
The former Hogwarts headmistress is going in the most intelligent tier. You have to be incredibly smart to be a part of the keepers that protected ancient magic. She, along with the other three keepers, are all geniuses, and all of them belong in the top tier. Isadora Morganach Isadora is also going in the most intelligent tier. To be able to figure out how to take people's pain out of their body is a feat that not many could figure out. That takes insane smarts that, in my opinion, makes her a genius. An evil genius, but a genius nonetheless. So she's for sure going in the top tier. Amit the car. Amit is going in the intelligent tier. He was an incredibly diligent student, being amazingly well-read on astronomy especially. He also had a lot of ambition, saying he was going to write a memoir about his life. The only reason why he's not in the top tier is because he proved he might not be as smart as he comes off when he tried speaking the goblin language gobbledygook. You speak gobbledygook. Oh, Bacalio. Please do not tell me that was meant to be gobbledygook. Perhaps my pronunciation was a bit off. Pronunciation is not the issue. I barely recognize that as language. To be fair though, he could still translate the language, so he's definitely above average overall. Duncan Hobhouse. Duncan is going in the average tier. He's just a middle range character in Hogwarts Legacy. He doesn't show me anything that would sway him up or down besides maybe his fear of puff skins, but that doesn't really measure intelligence. So yeah, just average. Everett Clopton. Everett is going in the dumb tier. He's not the brightest of the bunch as he cared more about breaking the rules than learning from professors. And most of all, he tried to cheat off a meat during the final charms exam, a very un-Ravenclaw-esque thing to do. So I'd say he's very below average for a Ravenclaw, so he's going in the lowest tier. Samantha Dale. Samantha is in the average tier for me. She really didn't show anything that would make her go above the middle tier, so yeah, she's just average. Soferina Franklin. I'm putting Soferina in the intelligent tier because she had an insane amount of knowledge about the wizarding world as she quizzed us on our knowledge. She's for sure in the intelligent tier. Serona Ryan. I would say that Serona is in the average tier, and to be honest, I considered putting her in the not intelligent tier mainly because she just runs a pub. Like, that's all she amounted to. Was she just not good enough to be able to work in the ministry like 95% of other wizards and witches? However, after really thinking about it, running a pub does take a fair amount of smart, so I'll be nice and I'll put her in the middle range instead of below it. Michael Corner Michael Corner is just average for me, and he was actually close to going in the tier below average, mainly because of his emotional immaturity during his breakup with Ginny, which I definitely think reflects your overall intelligence. But I think he's more average when looking at the rest of his story, and not just his story with Ginny. Garrick Ollivander Ollivander is going in the most intelligent tier. Not only is he a genius wand maker, but he also has the memory of a genius, as he can remember every detail of the wands he sells and who he sold it to. I remember every wand I've ever sold, Mr. Potter. That is absolutely wild. He definitely belongs in the top tier for Ravenclaws. Sybil Trelawney. I'm putting Sybil in the not intelligent tier. And before you freak out saying that every one of her predictions was right, no they weren't. That's a fan theory. Rowling herself said that Sybil is almost never right, both in the book where she had Dumbledore say that there were only two occasions where she wasn't a fraud. And in Rowling's own words, she said this on her website when expanding on Trelawney's story, which is 100% canon. So no, she's not always right. In fact, it's literally quite the opposite. She's a total fraud for 99% of her predictions, and the ones that were real, she didn't even know that they happened. She blacked out for them. Sorry, dear boy. Did you say something? Trelawney is not intelligent in the slightest, and her acting as though she's always right makes her even less intelligent. The only reason she's not in the dumb tier is because she does have an okay knowledge of other forms of divination like tea leaves, astronomy, and so on. Terry Boot. Terry is going in the average tier. He's nothing special. He joined the DA to learn more from Harry, but he never showed me anything that would put him above or below the middle range. Yurik the Oddball. This dude is as dumb as they come. He is for sure going in the dumb tier. 
He was best known for wearing a jellyfish on his head, but he did a lot of other dumb things on top of that. He had 50 pet auguries in his home whose cry is supposed to foretell death, which by the way is not the case. It literally just tells you when rain is coming. But when he heard his birds predicting the rain, he woke up and believed that he was dead and had become a ghost. And he then proceeded to try to walk through a wall, knocked himself out, and gave himself a 10 day long concussion. He for sure belongs at the bottom of the bottom tier. He is an absolute idiot. Quirin is Quirrell. I'm putting Quirrell in the most intelligent tier, which might surprise some people, but Quirrell was always a very gifted student during his time at Hogwarts, and this continued into adulthood as he was always one of the top professors during his time as the Muggle Studies teacher. And adding to that, we have the thing that really made me realize he should be in the top tier. He was able to break into Gringotts single-handedly, which is absolutely insane given how well guarded it is. At this point in the movie, he had Voldemort on the back of his head, but at this point in the book, he he did not have Voldemort, so he was literally all alone and did all of this by himself. The trio needed the help of someone who had worked at the bank for many years to pull this off, so Quirrell doing this on his own is wild. To me, that for sure puts him in the top tier. Marcus Belby Marcus came from a very pristine family, his uncle being a celebrated Order of Merlin award winner, but he got none of his family's intelligence. I'm putting him in the not intelligent tier. Despite coming from a very smart family, he's definitely below average, especially compared to where the standard is for Ravenclaw's intelligence. Eddie Carmichael Eddie is going in the intelligent tier simply because the main thing we know about him is that he got 9 outstanding OWLs, the best grade you can get. And on top of the outstanding grades, 9 OWLs is a very impressive number. However, he's not going in the top tier because he was convinced that the only reason he saw these results was because of Barufio's Brain Elixir, a scam of a potion that's said to make the user's brain power go up. But this was not proven to be true. So Eddie might just be a really good test taker, but nevertheless, he's well above average in my book. Padma Patil Padma is just average. She never showed me anything in the series to make me think that she's higher or lower than that. Also, before all of you movie watchers say that she's in Gryffindor, that's not actually the case. In the book, she's actually a Ravenclaw. The movies just changed her house so that the twins could be together more. Laverne de Mormorancy. Laverne is going in the intelligent tier. She invented a ton of love potion recipes that proved to be very successful, which shows a lot of knowledge in potion making. While that's impressive and definitely puts her above average, she didn't have much range past love potions, that was pretty much all she could do. So while she's arguably the best love potion maker in the wizarding world, I decided not to put her in the top tier because of that. Phileas Flitwick Flitwick is going in the most intelligent tier. He's one of the best charms professors of all time. He was a dueling champion when he was young, which is very impressive given his size. And he also mastered non-verbal magic, meaning doing magic without a wand, which is also very impressive. Overall, he's one of the smartest Ravenclaws of all time, so he definitely earned a spot in the top tier. Lorcan McLaird Lorcan is going in the average tier. He was a minister of magic for some time, but he was no genius. He was known for being an eccentric, who did odd things unbecoming of an intellect, like being obsessed with communicating by blowing puffs of smoke instead of just talking. And he was actually kicked out of office for his eccentrics, as people had had enough of his behavior, behavior that was normally associated with someone not very smart. Nevertheless though, the fact that he was elected into the top role makes me say that he's at least average. Luna Lovegood. As much as I love Luna, I can't put her any higher than the average tier, and even that is being generous. It hurts me to say this because I love Luna so much, but she shows tendencies of someone who just isn't that intelligent. Like her father, she believes in wild theories that have no basis despite the fact that every bit of evidence points to the opposite viewpoint. I think she's above her father going in the middle range because I think she was raised to have that mindset and overall she's gifted in a lot of other ways. So Luna is going in the average tier. Basil Franzik Franzik was a Hogwarts headmaster two appointments before Dumbledore, and he was a very good headmaster. He did a lot of good things for the school and brought a lot of great ideas forward to make it a better place, which makes me say he's above average, so I'm putting him in the intelligent tier. Hector Fawley 
Foley was another minister of magic, and he honestly did not live up to the Ravenclaw standard, especially when looking at how high his role in government was. He did not take Grindelwald's threat seriously, leading to Gellert's campaign that killed thousands of people. Thousands of people that died because of Foley's negligence. That seems like someone pretty freaking dumb to me, so he is going in the not intelligent tier. Roger Davies Roger Davies is also going in the not intelligent tier. He's just your average, popular, good looking jock as he was captain of the Ravenclaw Quidditch team and Fleur's date to the Yule Ball. And that's about all you can say about him, because his schoolwork did not paint him in as good of a light as his popularity did. So for me, he's below the average Ravenclaw in intelligence. Perpetua Fancourt Fancourt is going in the top tier, as she was the inventor of the Lunascope, an incredible invention that allowed wizards to study and analyze the different phases of the moon. She revolutionized the way the wizarding world went about astronomy, so for that, she's going in the most intelligent tier. Myrtle Warren Myrtle for me is average. She's a bit emotionally immature, which almost made me put her in the not intelligent tier, but when I really thought about it, I think she deserves to be in the middle range, but at the bottom of the middle range. Millicent Bagnold. Millicent was the Minister of Magic during the time of Voldemort's first reign of terror, and after stepping in for someone who was incapable of meeting Voldemort's threat, she did a pretty good job meeting him stride for stride. She was intelligent enough to admit that she needed help, enlisting the help of Barty Crouch, and together, they took masses of Voldemort's Death Eaters down. Looking at all of this, I think she belongs in the intelligent tier. It takes someone pretty freaking smart to admit that they need help, which is exactly what she did, and is exactly what her predecessor did not do. Anthony Goldstein I'm putting Anthony in the intelligent tier. He was a model student while at Hogwarts, getting good grades, setting a good example for younger students, and he was chosen to become a prefect in his fifth year. For that, I think he's above average when compared to most other Ravenclaws. Penelope Clearwater Penelope is also going in the intelligent tier, as she too was a model student. She was also made a prefect, and she dated Percy Weasley, who she would often have very intellectual conversations with. I think she too deserves to be above average on this tier list. Cho Chang Cho was just average in my opinion, so I'm putting her in the middle range. She never really showed anything that would make her go higher or lower, besides maybe her emotional immaturity during her breakup with Harry, but I think that was more the result of her PTSD after Cedric's death, so I won't hold that against her. So yeah, she's just average. Marietta Edgecombe I think Marietta is also average, as she too did not show me anything that would make her go higher or lower. She was a snitch, but I don't think that has anything to do with intelligence. And anyway, she got her comeuppance for ratting the DA out courtesy of Hermione Granger. Yikes. And there it is, all Ravenclaw characters ranked from the most intelligent to the least intelligent. Here's a look at the final tier list. Let me know what you think of my ranking in the comments below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? I'm excited to hear you guys' thoughts. Look out for the final two videos in the series where I rank all of the Slytherins and all of the Hufflepuffs based on their defining traits. That's all I have for you guys this week though, so I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. You can follow me on Instagram to see more of my personal life like my cute dog Loki and some behind the scenes movie flame stuff. I also do similar content on TikTok and Twitter that I do here on this channel, so if you like what I do here, check them out. All the handles are right below me and links are in the description. Over here are my wonderful patrons. If you want to be featured on the next video plus get a few other perks, become a patron today. As always, if you liked the video, hit that like button and subscribe and look out for more great movie flame videos on the way.